My name is Jonathan Ingram and today I'm going to talk about information modeling and some different applications for that. I'm going to start briefly with a little bit of history of BIM and then go on to some other subjects. I wrote the first systems in the 80s and 90s, sitting alone in an attic to write Sonata. Um, these can be recognized as the foundations of Revit and to a lesser extent Archicad. I sold the system, the less second system, to Parametric Technology in '96. I became CTO, and they licensed it to the founders of Revit. Um, I taught object modeling to postgraduate architects in Harvard, and uh, currently I'm CTO of Three Four Five Global. We do retail information modeling system, and I'll talk about that a little bit in a bit. Um, the agenda for today is brief history of information modeling and construction, modern retail information modeling, and design, talking about design for a system for designing a fusion device. So looking, going straight into it, and this is going to be fairly quick, we have coordinated drawings um, from Sonata and 3D with parametric objects, full color, data, um, linking objects, passing information backwards and forwards from the drawing to the uh, to the model. Um, that was and these first systems appeared in the late eighties, mid eighties. Um, we did the first information models with live data, pulling data in from construction sites into in particular we did a pulling um, deformation data from a um, actual coffer dam at Heathrow Express into the model and watch the deformation in the model. So live data in and out controlling objects outside controlling lights happened at, in the late 80s early 90s. First construction management systems where we're linking Gantt tables, slider bars and watching the effect on the construction and managing construction from that. The first building services models here we did, well, they started very early, but we started, um, this This is actually the building services for British Library, the largest UK um, services contract ever. We did the first engineering information models, so we're doing different sorts of engineering within that, and some analysis within that cut and fill. In that case, um, mathematical equations for roofs and structural analysis within some of the metal, the steel frames. Um, first city information models, and you can see some from 88 where we built complete cities in, with information being passed around to help us fit stuff into the, fit buildings into the, uh, and into that landscape and uh, watching the some of the effects of shadowing and other things. We did the first retail information modeling and here I work with Mark Edwards who is uh, my CEO in 345 Global, we'll talk about it a bit, but we have been in information modeling and retail on and off for many, many years. Uh, we did the first, and this is various slides here, the first modular build system, the first VRs, the first ground radar and we actually had a wide area network in the uh, late 80s early 90s and here's an example of one of our clients spreading it around um, using different disciplines using the same model um, around the country and in fact internationally so that's that's where the brief of what we've achieved so far and um, we're talking about retail information modeling mostly today and 345 is up and going and we've been at it for five years. Um, what is what is it really that we do? We What does information modeling do? It, it takes the separate disciplines and melds them in, in a way through the common database. So in retail information, BIM, this is very clear and you have the architects, engineers, services and structure managers, everyone shares that database 
In applying the same ideas to retail, we have the store designers, the merchandisers, the sales and marketing people, store operations, they have data coming in, data coming out, they all have share the model, but currently they are all independent silos using different programs which are very difficult to talk to each other. We unify that approach and make a single common model. Again, very similar to BIM, but um, applied very much to, re to retail. So we've been this for five, over five years now, almost six years, and we have a, a large number of clients in the United States who are using this system. What, we gives, what it gives us is a single source of truth, graphics, again, the same parameters from the same benefits of um, building information modeling, but we have modern it, modernized it very much, unlike the other systems who are stuck with what actu we actually wrote in the 90s. Revit is very much largely what we wrote in the 90s, C++ and unchanged except for over-engineering. Here we have uh, added on top of this augmented reality, artificial intelligence and a variety of uses, virtual reality, voice recognition, mobile devices, um, and web apps and long other things. You'll see some of these as we go through the presentations. So now, so this is a video about in the age uh, of customer introducing our we're seeing a power shift from retailer to consumer. Meaningfully engaging shoppers remains core to successful retail. Retail. Introducing 345, a remarkably realistic total store environment that is the first of its kind to harness the smart integration of store planning, merchandising, sales, and marketing into one powerful cloud-based platform. VQ is the heartbeat of 345. VQ is the database. Our studio drives communication and collaboration. Our plan integrates macro and micro space planning. Our map captures and measures retail execution at shelf. And our view reveals the shopper's intent at the point of purchase. So imagine if we can improve your visibility before you build where you could preview the customer experience in a lifelike 3D environment. There are actual shots from the Blueprints, fixture cut sheets, Programs. department layouts, marketing plans, planograms, and product sets combined with rich data all brought together within VQ. So we can build and collaborate together in a single consolidated environment on behalf of your customers. 345's mirror stores act as precise. That's actual live footage from the program. And that's the quality of. Each of those products is live and complete retail. and 3D. Our studio's customer experience platforms bring the voice of the store to life through smart 3D dashboards, touch tables, and life-size screens to empower retailers and suppliers to design and realize in-store pioneering solutions together. We can collaborate virtually and in real time, modifying the store and moving fixtures around. We can adjust macro space, change the layout and category adjacencies. We can add signage and explore navigation cubes. And because of our seamless integration with Blue Yonder, we can import and export planograms effortlessly so you can experiment with as many different shelf flows as you want. For each new planogram, we can see what the changes actually look like. And if anything's not right, we simply adjust it. It really is that simple for us to collaborate together. Our plan delivers the next generation of shelf planning with an intuitive cloud-based interface that makes it easy to move, edit, and swap products across one or multiple planograms. Gone are the frustrations of old or the need for expert users. Leverage our technology to show relative sales velocity across SKUs at a total store, department, category, or product level. And if you want greater insights, you can drill down with our advanced analytic and visualization software to bring complex data to life to easily evaluate your current planograms by highlighting each category's percent of sales, linear space, or highlight top and bottom performers. Currently, retailers send store layouts, planograms, and marketing plans to each of their stores. Yet the reality is, these plans rarely reflect the actual range and layout found in-store, with compliance often falling short of expectations. 345's revolutionary Mirror app overcomes this challenge. 
using a smart device to scan and create an exact replica or mirror copy of each store in the cloud. Our map automatically generates an editable realogram from each scan to compare against the original planogram to drive real-time action for store associates and merchandising reps alike. Our map measures compliance at shelf, evaluating out of stocks, on shelf availability, and share of shelf. We capture brand, flavor, size, and product orientation with 100% accuracy. Our view transforms the mirror store into an online, interactive shopping experience, revealing invaluable insights into the shopper's path to purchase, how they navigate the space, where they look, and what they buy from entry through to checkout. Geo is our customer experience platform, enabling shoppers to talk directly to each and every product in store on an individual, one-to-one -one basis, providing a wealth of information from price and promotion to benefits and ingredients to deliver a game-changing marketing platform with personal location-based incentives for shoppers, promoting to and assisting them to make smart choices at the point of purchase through their trusted shopping assistant on their smartphone. 345 enables the next generation of retailing, unraveling the complex DNA of the modern retail store to meaningfully engage shoppers at the moment of truth. So basically we build all the, combine all the different disciplines together and make it into a single database which can be ac accessed by various programs that we provide. Um, some things like drawings, uh, Revit drawings, um, AutoCAD drawings, we just uh, take in. We don't try and replicate that. We use those automatically to generate models. We have thousands of stores in the pipeline and hundreds of thousands of products, so we are well on the way. Um, they are the main views we saw and we allow space planning, shelf compliance, research, collaboration around this single thing with a range of programs. It's from macro to micro to data. So we have, uh, we generate complete stores. The customer can build their own stores or we provide them for them, generate semi-automatically from drawings to the provide CAD drawings or BIM drawings. Um, we scan the products with the customer or with the yeah with the customer and you can see the quality of the products there. they're very high quality products because they are uh, need to be seen but also they're used to train the ai so it's a virtual product to train the ai in order to uh, recognize when we walk around the store we need to be able to recognize objects uh, which we do with a handheld phone in fact so we can construct the store a realistic version of the store, exact copy of the store. Uh, the products are used, input, and there's a lot of work goes into the products, but they are input and very high quality. And if you scan that QR code, you will see, um, you'll be able to place a product on the table and you'll get the idea of the quality. We can read right down very low um, aspect, high resolution, um, views of those products. You can see different programs are used in and the in order to capture the store in its true state so we can determine compliance against what's supposed to be there then we have this uh, web program a, an app, a web app to read the and determine what the products are. If the product is um, not recognized as happens with AI then we can look at the QR code the barcode or we can actually if it's not entered or we don't recognize it then it's flagged in the system so we have great um, the fixtures and the objects within the model are from cut sheets semi-automatically and they again used throughout the model data is from external systems but displayed within the within our model in different ways depending on who it is. We generate our own data from the research. We have a research capability where customers go in and shop 
uh, either an actual model or a potential model, a shop, an actual store or a potential store. We have collaboration uh, studios, I think is the best word, so a complete wall, 86 inch touch screens, and you'll see that working in a moment. Uh, we have a number of those around the United States. So once we've generated these stores, the stores can be used for different things, for management, for e-commerce, so we can shop the store, and you'll see that in a moment, um, and for them to work out actually what should be there, is there compliance, and display that, and run line reviews. And again, if you look at that QR code, scan it, you'll be able to step up and down the store and pick up products and look at them from the shelves. Now this is an example, I'm just going to skip through this, but this is custom building. If you look at the top left corner, you'll see the um, user touching a large touch screen and moving around. You see the quality. He is adding planograms, uh, manipulating them in real time. It's, it's a very high quality uh, capability within we have many thousands of products in a very complex store and some of the stores we have are the size of Walmart or Target in America so we have very large um, its capabilities are huge and there is a level of detail going on because you we can't display tens of thousands of products which have got very high quality lots of surfaces lots of parametric lots of facets, etc., without doing that. Um, the quality is great, and this once built, we can use it for all of those different purposes. Now I'm going to show a video from one of the our customers and um, they've used this to win work with one of the retailers. Um, Building a SWA store is I'm going to skip through it. Walmart store in the country. We add the PSA files to build the existing mods for beer, so this wine, is and spirits. live footage from the then actual program analytic on and a desktop. Software brings complex a data to life. Desktop. Easily evaluate your current mod by highlighting each category's percent of sales, SKUs, and space or highlight top and bottom performers. And that's just the beginning. We can collaborate virtually and in real time, modifying the store and moving fixtures around. We can adjust macro space, change the layout and category adjacencies. We can add signage and explore navigational cues. And because of our seamless integration with JDA, we can import mods effortlessly, so you can experiment with as many different shell flows as you want. For each new mod, we can see what the changes actually look like. And if anything's not right, we simply adjust it. It really is that simple for us to collaborate together on the design of a SWAS store. Then we can test the SWAS concept. This is the research side. Gaining invaluable insights on the path to purchase. into the store and they how shop they navigate the space, And this is the date that comes out. They buy. Once the design is signed off, another benefit is we will export a CAD and JDA floor plan back to you, saving Walmart's mod and space execution team significant time not having to translate the concept and build out their own files. Then, when the SWA store is built, we can leverage our technology to show you how it's performing. Here, Here you've got the idea. Um, it's very powerful and does combine across all the different disciplines which puts us in a unique position in the United States market. So retail, it's using our history of information modeling. It is an information, a building information model into which we have inserted a lot of other information and live data. Um, combining data into the model has been a significant challenge and uh, is, but it's very useful. It, it, the stores need to know how to redesign based on how to change based on performance in the past. 
The, we've built a system from the bottom up in the last five years using ultra, the latest, latest techniques, um, different, different languages, different um, databases. We tend to use to Google Cloud where we can, and they bring us very strong security and speed and scalability. Um, we've been guided by our customers' needs. So we're, we're ready to go on e at the end of the first year. In fact, we had research running at that moment, but we've been listening to our customers for the last four years and integrating their strongest ideas, the common ideas across the system and making it so that we have a system which is incredibly useful for them. The, we're using AI, AR, VR, for, and all of those techniques for extending the capability uh, and making sure that the, we have the latest technology available to our customers. Now, before I leave this, I just want to show an old movie uh, just to contrast. I'm only going to show a few seconds, but this was done in 1977, and we it was done with punch cards onto a computer system, onto a Comp 80 from a triple I onto a triple I Comp 80 and it was on the Cyber 76. So it's a very old and very powerful machine. But it's done with punch cards and we produced a whatever it is, 35 millimeter sprocket of movie. It was not possible to make a proper movie at the time because the information was recorded onto um, tapes, the large tapes that we you get at the time and we're just taking many many tapes worth of information to record this so we couldn't do that I mean that's a very brief version of just just contrast what's happened over the years so now we're going to start building a system to build a fusion reactor and this is very different to the other parts um, it uses the same concepts of information model and bits and pieces from the uh, retail information modeling. This system is not being built, it is the idea of how it would be done, how it could be done. So the idea is to shorten design cycles, integrate late data, not do the collaboration cross discipline, simulation, visualization, optimization. It has the same problems as building and retail in that there are multiple uh, vertical ivory towers where the information is very difficult to pass between those towers. We have design, the engineering design, we have the physics and the analysis of what's going on inside the tokamak which is inside the fusion device which very very complex incredibly high temperatures hundreds of millions of degrees uh, negative very almost zero Kelvin in cooling parts it is intense magnetic fields, uh, radiation, so it's a very complex set of things going on in addition to the straight engineering. The physical stresses are great, so we have we have to integrate all of that. On top of that, we have to be able to do a simulation of the actual device running and see how what results are within the within that setup. And on top of that, we need to be able to do PLM, which is to manage the parts and the system as it's constructed and to be aware of what's where because it's intricate. A single source of truth, as with all of the different um, information models. Here's a snapshot of how it could look um, an information management system, which wouldn't be that different to Sonata Reflex. Revit, Archicad, any of those could sit in the middle layer. I would suggest best start again and have a nice clean interface with new system. Um, extended parametrics, multiple views, and that sort of, as we've just been talking about. The concept is similar to BIM, but it is extended. We have different views as being the different one. Multiple views for objects to allow simulation, to allow the different types of analysis within the model. And 
it's it is fairly straightforward to do it but it's it's work and we need to have following narrative of changes we need to propagate errors through the network so it's it's quite there are quite a lot of things to go on but the benefits are huge and it, it, rather than having a design cycle time of a year or two every time you make a change we're hoping to get it down to hours or perhaps days where you can integrate the data the in, data is integrated into the model the changes are integrated into the model uh, and viewed what's happening there are different types of views and this is just some of them we need to be able to track the radiation effect the electromagnetic effect the mechanical effects the amount of heat which is not insignificant the normal building services stuff and the error propagation if we take an example of a coil which is quite a complex device toroidal coil which is an integral part of the um, fusion device then we can have the view some of the views are going to be very similar to um, building information modeling with the same sort of benefits you get from that but on top of that we need to have um, some additional tools where all of this external code for generating component parts or for doing simulations can be led loaded in and into the .NET uh, environment and compiled directly into it and executed as part of the model. The magnetic and thermal properties need to have their own views. The integrated tools, and this is just the tools which I would use, tools I know, integrated into the um, models to allow this sort of analysis. The tritium model is, I believe, is the best one data is going to be generated this was the device is going to take years to build so the data changes and we need to be able to integrate that in to see as the experiments happen the data changes and we need to be able to integrate that into the model we need to have be able to see a dashboard to control the simulation and to see an overall effect of the possible energy generation the analysis optimization uncertainty and simulation become important parts so here we've seen information modeling applied to some different areas and um, hopefully you found it interesting and let me know if you have questions thank you